Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another first impressions video, and today we're going to be taking a look at Codename Steam for the 3DS. This title was sent to me by Nintendo so that I could give it a look and tell you guys my opinions on it. So, what is Codename Steam all about? Well, in its essence, it is a turn based strategy game. But when you get right down to it, there's um, a couple of more nuances because the way you move your characters almost makes you makes it feel like it's a third person shooter, which is good because it simplifies a lot of the strategy mechanics to give you uh, a little bit of a more, um, how should I put it? I don't want to say easier because the game gets really challenging, but a more understandable uh, way of how you handle each unit strategically. It is very approachable and, and it is very easy to get into because it doesn't really make things overly complicated for you. And there's a lot of visual aids as to when you are uh, firing your weapon and whatnot, you know, to make sure that you understand what action you are taking. So it is a fairly easy to get into strategy RPG, um, turn-based strategy. Because I know that a lot of people hear turn-based strategy are like, oh my god, it's like probably not for me because I just like, you know, real-time stuff. You might want to take a look at Codename Steam because it does a lot of stuff differently from what you would expect from a turn-based strategy game. So in terms of story, I just want to get that out of the way because I wasn't the biggest fan of the story. Essentially, aliens invade the world and they actually start with London, which is weird because usually when aliens invade the world and it's like an end of the world scenario, they always start with the United States for whatever reason. But this time around, they start um, in London and you basically take control of a couple of steam agents and you go fight the aliens. So... What is STEAM? What does STEAM even mean? STEAM stands for Strike Team Eliminating the Alien Menace. Yeah, but also STEAM is because the, the main resource of your characters is STEAM. This is 19th century steampunk alternate universe scenario, so to speak. So, I mean, the story so far from what I've played, I've played up until chapter 3 or 4, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, I've played up until then. And the story is basically, there's aliens, let's go kill them. So it's, it's, it's a fairly basic story, but the gameplay kind of makes up for it. Because the gameplay, like I said, simple, approachable, effective. Um, you start the game by playing with Henry Fleming and John Henry, who are apparently uh, related to some political, not political, uh, but some war heroes or something. Uh, but I'm not that familiar with uh, the history of these two war heroes. But they are related, to the, the characters are like uh, a metaphor for these heroes that actually existed in real life the same th the same way as we have abraham lincoln as the leader of the the steam organization so to speak so you will unlock uh more characters as you move along and not all of them are based in real life heroes and stuff like that there's actually uh characters from moby dick like you will unlock queequeg as you play through the game uh you will also unlock lion and scarecrow from the wizard of oz so it, it's very diverse i mean you even unlock tom sawyer Okay, and I haven't even seen the Tom Sawyer cartoons in ages, so I don't know why they just pull that out. It's like let's get the let's get a couple of characters from Moby Dick and a couple of characters from The Wizard of Oz and uh, Tom Sawyer, because why not? And put them under Abraham Lincoln's supervision, <laughs> you know. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of um, uh, a lot of colorful characters there, which I'm sure will make will make things interesting with the banter, because there's always banter going on as you are playing through the game. Like, um, I, I always seem to remember John Henry's because I keep trying to move him more than the steam he has actually allows me. And he says, I don't have enough steam. Or whenever he's uh, getting ready to play, whenever you select him, he's like, time to show my steel. So there, there's a lot of, you know, interesting quotes and stuff like that as you play through the game. Um, beyond the characters that you unlock in the game itself, if you happen to have uh, Fire Emblem Amiibos, because in case you guys don't know, this game is actually made by the same people who uh, make the, uh, the Fire Emblem game. So if you have any Fire Emblem Amiibos, you can actually scan them into the game and they will work as a, um, as a character that you can use in your missions. Uh, as you progress through the game, I believe you will be able to uh, control up to four members on each mission. And uh, one of your uh, amiibo characters can be one of those members, but it's not like in addition to the people that you already have. They take up, um, they take up a slot. But I, I have to say, I've, I only have Marth uh, from Fire Emblem, and I've played with Marth, and I have to say, I kind of feel that uh, when compared to the rest of what the team brings, Marth is 
pretty lackluster. I mean, you have to basically with Marth, you have to move up to the enemies and actually smack them in melee range with the Falcon. And it's not very effective because by the time you get to the aliens, they'll, they might have had their Overwatch turns on you. They might have shot the crap out of you. And then you get there and you're not even dealing like a massive amount of damage. Like you're dealing decent damage. And his attacks, I guess, don't cost as much steam. But getting to the enemies, that is kind of the problem. At least that's how I feel. But then again, if you're really passionate about the Fire Emblem characters, well, you get to use them in this game as well. So there you go. Um, now, in terms of the actual gameplay, when you are in the, um, the map and you're, you're actually playing, so when you start the, um, each map, you get an introduction of what your objective is, but usually most maps consist of you navigating through a bunch of aliens and getting to a specific goal, at which point you move on to the next mission. Uh, if any of your characters dies during a mission, that's fine because they get resurrected for the next mission. There is no problems there. Of course, uh, I do believe you get scored on how many turns it takes you to finish the level, on whether or not you picked up all the collectibles and stuff like that. So you want to, um, you, you know, you want to take attention to that. You don't want to just let your characters die for no reason. So, you know, and also once one of your characters dies, the game becomes really, really harder because the game does get pretty challenging. Um, at least that's kind of how I felt in the in the last couple of levels that I've been playing. Um, each character, um, the during gameplay, your characters will use Steam as a resource, as I mentioned previously. This is used as a resource both for movement as well as for your combat actions. And you will have to pay close attention because, uh, for instance, firing um, Henry Fleming's rifle takes up three Steam. So if you want to move to a place where you can actually shoot an alien... Uh, you still need to save those three steams in, in order to be able to take the shot. Uh, John Henry's, um, what is it, a grenade launcher, I think is what he's got. Uh, John Henry's grenade launcher uses up four steams. So you have to, you know, pay attention to that stuff. Uh, you can also save steam for your next turn and you can use Overwatch mode. So for instance, say that you know that you can get to a certain point And when you get to that point, you know that the aliens are going to be moving your way. Well, if you leave enough steam in your character and your character's weapon uh, is Overwatch enabled, because not all weapons are uh, Overwatch enabled. Uh, for instance, Hen Henry Fleming's rifle, you can leave that in, let's say you, you end your turn and you leave three steam on Henry Fleming. What happens is if an alien goes close enough, he goes into Overwatch and he shoots the alien. Uh, this is just a normal shot, nothing special. And after he shoots it once, I mean, unless you have six steam available, you can only shoot him once. And once you shoot that alien, that's it. The alien still gets to, like, move. Or there's a possibility the alien might be stunned. However, Overwatch goes both ways. So if you go into the line of sight of an alien, he's going to be in Overwatch mode as well. And he's going to lock you down and he's going to shoot you. So you got to be careful about that stuff. And uh, the interesting part about it is that um, they've taken a really bold move here, which is there's no Overwatch camera. You don't get a bird's eye view of the, of the scenario. And why am I saying that this is a bold move? Because you don't always know if there's an alien around the corner or not. Like, they give you kind of a little pan at the start of the map, but that doesn't tell you everything you need to know. So um, you'll have to position your characters in a way um, that you will be able to get line of sight from at least one character so that you know what's up ahead. And if you don't know what's up ahead, you can end the map pretty fast. As a matter of fact, that is one of the things that is a little bit frustrating, I found, which is um, like when I was, a lot of the times I would be moving through a map and I would not be, you know, I wouldn't be expecting to find an alien directly in front of me. I find the alien, Overwatch mode engage, he shoots me down and he doesn't kill my character, but he puts me at a severe disadvantage and sometimes even stuns my character. And then it's the alien's turn. Then they go there and they punish me even more and they just shoot my characters down, right? Uh, and the problem with that is that a lot of times I was just like, well, I guess I'll just restart this map because I already know the alien's there. And then just, you know, it becomes a little bit of a trial and error, but it becomes really repetitious because, you know, with the turns mechanics and stuff. Um, yeah, because you're taking turns, then the aliens are taking turns, and you're taking turns again. It's repetitive and not always in a good way. So it is a bold move. Uh, I think it's it's an interesting concept. I mean, obviously, it's not like it hasn't been done before, but I think it's interesting from the perspective that if you take a look at something like Fire Emblem, you're always looking at it from a bird's eye view. You know exactly where your enemies are, all that stuff, and then you come into this, and it's just very, very brutally different. 
Um, so beyond that, each of your characters will have a unique weapon as well as a unique special attack that you can only use once per map. An example is Henry Fleming throws out what I could only really describe as a freedom grenade. I don't remember what exactly the name of his skill is, but it's almost like a batarang that he throws, except it's shaped like an eagle and he throws that and it just like explodes and there you go. Uh, John Henry's is like uh, an AOE type thing. Uh, one of the lion characters which I've played uh, is also got this AOE stun. So there's these really unique abilities that can really give you uh, the edge in battle. And the unique abilities also don't use steam. So if you're in a real bind and you're out of steam and whatnot, you might have to make use of those special abilities that you get. Um, as um, as you play through the game, uh, the, the whole Aliens turns, there, there was actually a, a very big problem when the game was released, and I believe that's probably mentioned in a lot of the reviews of the game because I heard a lot of people complain about this. Um, and that problem was the Alien turn took, like, forever. And it did because I played it during those times. And the Alien turn really did, like, took sometimes upwards of minutes and you'd just be, like, sitting there waiting, doing nothing. Uh, so that was very frustrating, but uh, luckily there was a patch added recently um, which speeds up the alien's turn. Uh, and they're already starting to, to make some use of the new Nintendo 3DS technology, which is if you have a new Nintendo 3DS, it speeds up the, uh, the alien turns by three times. If you have the old 3DS, it speeds it up by twice the speed, I guess. Because of the better processor unit or whatever on the new 3DS, they're able to squeeze a little bit more juice out of it. But yeah, uh, that was a problem. So if you read that in the review or something, that was a problem. But they patched it, and now the alien turns are a lot faster. They're like basically in fast forward. I mean, you can choose to still have them slower if you're into that. But you can just put them in fast forward, and it's acceptable. It's still not perfect because the ideal situation would be let me just skip the alien turn and deal with the consequences because sometimes it, it does take quite a bit. Uh, the aliens aren't always just the ones that are on the map. Like they will spawn new aliens and maybe the objectives will even differ as you uh, play through the scenario and whatnot. There's also not just, you know, the scenarios aren't um, set in stone. Like there's a lot of objects that, objects that you can destroy. There's also turrets on the map. Um... And there's uh, save points so that you can save uh, midway through the game, but you have to actually fight to get to a save point. There's also these monitors that they have, uh, which will give you hints and tips of mechanics. Like there was a tip that says, oh, you should probably shoot down this chandelier because it's going to deal mass amounts of damage to your enemies. But the advantage of reading those tips is also that when you go to that monitor... It will also increase. Um, it will refill your steam gauge. So, say you're trying to make this move on an alien that's really far away. You move up to one of those monitors, refill your steam gauge. Boom, you're good to go. Keep on going and shoot the alien down. Um, the game is very much based in line of sight. Like I mentioned, you have to see uh, the aliens. Uh, there's no overhead, no nothing. Uh, I mean, you don't necessarily have to see them. Like, if you can make an educated guess that there's an alien behind something and you're playing with uh, John Henry, for instance, and he's got a grenade launcher, so it's, it's got an arc shot, right? So you're, you're able to shoot aliens behind boxes and stuff like that. But normally, you know, typical weapons, you'll have to be able to see the, uh, the enemies. And also the different weapons that you have available to you, which also consume different amounts of steam, uh, like John Henry's grenade launcher consumes four steams. Your the Henry Fleming's rifle consumes three steams. Sorry, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before or not. I'm kind of feeling I might have mentioned that in this video, but this is like my third or fourth take, so sorry. But um, the, the, beyond using different steam, they also have they're very different. So they give you a lot of options. Like uh, Lion has a Lion launcher, which will deal damage, but not only that, it will actually move your character across. The, the battlefield. Henry Fleming can also be fitted with a uh, medical rifle, which allows you to shoot medical things to your friends. It's like, here's a shot of morphine, dude. Boom. You get, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, you just uh, refill hit points of uh, friendly units by shooting them with your medical rifle. Uh, this does, however, demand that you are in range for shooting the medical rifle. Uh, John Henry also has a basic steam rifle that he can use, uh, and it can also be used to put him in overwatch because you can't do overwatch with every weapon like the rocket launcher, grenade launcher can't be used, uh, to be in overwatch mode. Uh, so yeah, these different, um, weapons and different special attacks and all this stuff 
it really comes together well um, to give you a lot of options when you're playing the game. As a matter of fact, as you, um, as you progress through the game, you will eventually be forming your own team. It's like at the start of the game, your team is almost pre-made because you don't have all of the options. So you start like Henry Fleming, then John Henry, then Lion, and then this, uh, what's her name? Tiger Lily. Then Tiger Lily joins your team. So, um, and later on, you will have a lot more characters unlocked and maybe even some amiibos that you want to put in there and you can really just form up your team and customize them and say no you're going to take the medical rifle i take an extra steam rifle and you know just kind of sort stuff out that way so it gives you a a a little bit of customization in terms of which team you take and not only that but you can also customize the individual characters and their loadouts so that's pretty cool uh, as you go through the map, there's also a bunch of collectibles that you're able to, um, that you're able to pick up, uh, coins as well as gears. And as you collect these, you will be able to upgrade your kit, uh, in the Liberty ship. I think the, the ship is called Liberty. Yes. Abraham Lincoln flies a steam based ship called Liberty. <laughs> Uh, I believe I've also mentioned there's a bunch of uh, destructible objects in the maps, which allows you to change th- things around. As a matter of fact, there's some objects you might want to destroy because they might have loot in there that you want to um, that you want to get. But um, yeah, that is essentially Codename Steam. Uh, the game is fun, although I have to say it's not really uh, up my alley. I kind of really enjoyed Fire Emblem a lot more than Codename Steam. I guess it's the whole steampunk thing. Uh, the graphics are pretty good. They are very colorful, and you guys know that I like uh, colorful graphics because a lot of games these days are just like gray, brown, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> these graphics are very, very colorful. Uh, they have a present- uh, comic book style presentation before each mission, and uh, the voice acting is pretty decent. So, I mean, if you're into turn-based strategy and you're looking for something that's a little bit different, this game might just be it. Uh, it is fun. But uh, if you're not that much into turn-based strategy, I mean, I, you probably might want to steer clear of it. But yeah, that's uh, my take on Codename Steam. It works on both the new 3DSs as well as the old ones. It's not exclusive to the new 3DS. And uh, talking about the 3DS, I'd just like to give you guys a call to action before I finish this video. And that is, uh, please take your 3DSs with you. Because personally, I'm in Portugal. I take my 3DS pretty much everywhere I go. And I'm always trying to get street pass hits. And it's really hard because apparently not a lot of people do this stuff in Europe. I mean, I, I say in Europe in general because, you know, I'm in Portugal, I'm in Europe. I'm assuming that the scene is not that big in Europe, at least not Japan levels. Because I hear that in Japan, you go to the bus and it's like, boom, you filled up your street pass hits, you know. Or well, actually, you don't take buses in Japan, right? Take like the bullet trains and shit. So, yeah, you go to a bullet train in Japan, boom, street pass hits full. That's what I want. Okay, I was able to get two street pass hits today. It was a lot of fun, but come on, two street pass hits, which, you know, which basically added up to a combined total of four street pass hits since I bought the console in like February or something. Not really that much. So start carrying your 3DSs, please. I mean, let's get some street pass action going. I don't know. I kind of like that idea. But yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Leave me your comments, feedback, all that kinds of good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.